All right, let's get you out the door here on our Monday morning. Quiet start to the day, dry roads, but it's going to become increasingly breezy and then windy and then scattered showers are going to develop, uh, especially this afternoon. So it's going to get kind of nasty out there with the wind and those raindrops blowing around. The high temperature only reaching about 47 degrees. Right now we're starting the day in the mid to upper 30s. Kim? Oh, that does not sound good for our evening commute, but Let's take a look at our morning commute right now. We've got better news for you. This is I-75 right at Schaefer, and you can see that we're not dealing with any of that stuff that Paul is talking about for later today. Light traffic volumes and accident free to start off your morning. All right, thank you, Kim, and good health. High intensity interval training is expected to be next year's most popular fitness trend. Yeah, that's according to a new survey of more than 4,000 fitness professionals. The training is made up of bursts of vigorous exercise, followed by short periods of rest. And despite the popularity of this exercise, there is a higher risk of injury, though experts say with proper precautions, interval training like this, it's safe. It's in a very effective way to work out. And they also say that you should do that on the treadmill as well, not just with with this type of exercise, but mm -hmm. even when you're running and stuff like that, yeah. it helps burn more fat than uh, your traditional cardio. It's like, you say. know, just on the treadmill for an hour. Yeah, get a little faster. It's also more tiring too. <laughs> that you should also be aware of. Yeah. It is 525 everybody and coming up next at 530 local stories for you from Detroit, Westland and Ann Arbor. Also had a campus crime alert from the University of Michigan. What happened inside of a home near the school that has police warning students this morning. Plus this local mom admitted to leaving her kids in the car just so she could go gambling at MGM Grand. We'll tell you what's happening today that will decide her future next in a live report. Keep it here. One pie from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News Today at 530 starts now. Gambling with her children's safety. This local mom is set to be sentenced today for leaving her kids in the car while she went inside the casino to gamble. Plus, not again. Believe it or not, this is not the first time a wild wreck like that, like what you just saw there has happened to this business. And a windy and wet day is expected across Metro Detroit. The big question, though, is the Halloween forecast and wet is not a good mix for Halloween. No, so we can at least be dry. I know temperatures have taken a dip, but if we can keep things dry for tomorrow. That'll be better for the my kids. son picked out a perfect Halloween costume that he doesn't have to worry about wearing a coat over it. Oh, it's long sleeve. He can wear several layers underneath. And what's his costume? He's going to be a ninja. All right. Yeah, good deal. So he's good. And he's literally covered. I mean, he's got the mask and the hood and everything. <laughs> Sounds so. like he's going to need it to stay warm. Yeah. tomorrow, Paul. <laughs> Absolutely, and I'll have that uh, Halloween forecast coming up in about 10 minutes. And by the way, the Halloween committee we met, actually that's Kim and me talking during the break. We're bringing back the dancing mummy from last year. So we'll do that in about, again, about 10 minutes. All right, right now we have 35 degrees. The wind not terrible, southwest at nine. You'll notice a bit of a breeze when you head out the door. The pressure already kind of low, 29.66. All right, so let's talk about what's going on. We're dry. We've had a brief, about a two, three hour window of clearing overnight. That's moved out. This right here, you can see this right here, this lighter shade here, that's clouds moving back in. Now we have a cold front back here. Now the front's back here, and we usually talk about these showers ahead of a front, but those aren't going to be really the ones that get us. It's going to be behind the front with the lake effect kicking in, and those lake effect rain showers are going to cross the state, and it's going to get windy today as well. So temperature-wise, again, we're starting in the mid-30s, highs in the mid-40s. The wind will be gusting to about 30 miles per hour, and the best chance for these showers is going to be during the afternoon. Here's a quick snapshot of the temperature trend. No Notice it is an upward trend as we move through the week, but it's going to be a cold Halloween, Kim. Again, I'll have details with that coming up in just a few minutes. Oh, well, definitely dress warm for those trick-or-treaters out there. Good morning, everyone. We are good to go this morning. No accidents to report right now, but we want to let you know about some construction over in Allen Park. The east and westbound lanes of Goddard right at I-75. That is closing today at 7 a.m., so uh, that's going to remain closed. It's a continuous project re remaining closed until 5 p.m. on Thursday, so no no problem there. All you need to do is use Northline instead if you do travel through this area of Allen Park. We also have more construction to talk about over on the lodge. I'll tell you all about that in my next report at 544. Back to you. All righty, Kim will be checking back in with you. It is 531 now. When I get to our top story this half hour, a local mother about to learn her legal fate for doing the unthinkable. Yes, her small children left alone in a car while she went into the casino to gamble for hours. Local force Coco McAvoy joins us now live and Coco this story. Boy, did it upset a lot of people. Yes, Rhonda and Evra, the kids were left in the car for almost two hours, and today their mother, Cleli Shute, will face a judge. 
The case against Cleli Shute began in August of this year. Shute was charged with leaving her two kids in a car in the MGM Casino parking garage while she gambled inside. Shute's defense attorney argued her case at the time. This is the first time this incident for Ms. Shute. Um, despite the severity of the circumstances, Your Honor, Ms. Shute has no primary or any type of probation or any other type of prior history. This is the type of case that obviously is, is very serious in nature. We have two minor children that are vulnerable and cannot take care of themselves. Police say Shute's two-year-old boy and six-month-old girl were found in Shute's car. The windows were left slightly cracked and were covered with blankets. The prosecutor said a person walking by noticed the children and alerted security. Doing video footage that she covered the windows so that these two children could not be seen from outside the vehicle. Uh, that the temperatures within that parking structure were between 85 and 90 degrees. The children were in the car for almost two hours. Shoot was arrested and the children were given to their father. Now, two months later, Shoot will be in court to be sentenced for the crime. And she will be in court at 8.30 this morning for her sentencing. We'll, of course, let you know what happens. Back to you. And Coco, in terms of the amount of time that she could serve, do we know a range? Yes, Rhonda. So she was charged with fourth degree child abuse, and that means that she could serve up to a year in prison. Wow. Kids in the car for two hours. That is a long time. Yeah, All right, Coco. Small kids, too. Thank you for the update. It's 533 now. We have a crime alert from the University of Michigan Division of Public Safety. Investigators there are saying that a home invasion was reported near the North Campus. This was early Sunday. It happened on North Fair across from the North Quad Residential and Academic Complex. Someone entered an apartment through an unlocked door and took electronics from a common area while the residents there slept. Police are urging residents to make sure that all of their doors are locked at all times. In southwest Detroit, a father of two continues to recover after being shot several times following a fender bender. The accident happened on Saturday night on McGraw near Proctor. Family members say that 40 year old Oscar Jimenez was shot in the leg and in the rib cage. The other driver started to demand money after the little accident. But when Jimenez said that he didn't have any, the other driver started shooting at him. Jimenez's family says that he's a hardworking landscaper and that there was no need to shoot. He was driving to the store, to a liquor, and he crashed behind somebody. And the moment he got out, they like started shooting at him. And they got shot right here. How's he doing? Mm -hmm, good. He's speaking and... Yeah. He's speaking, okay. So he's going to survive. Yes. Thank goodness for that. Police are looking for the black Chevy Malibu driven by the shooter. Menez is listed in critical condition. A police chase through multiple cities is all caught on camera. The pursuit starting in Westland and took police through local streets as well as the highway on 94. So take a look at the video that a viewer sent us from that chase as it went through Taylor. Well, there you see it. Police are saying that it was a pretty lengthy pursuit lasting about 47 minutes before ending on Oakwood Boulevard in Allen Park. The suspect was being investigated for suspicious drug activity. He is in custody right now. Sadly, three young girls are killed and six others were seriously hurt after a pickup truck crashes into a buggy in mid Michigan. This happened just after 830 Sunday morning in Evergreen Township, which is just northeast of Grand Rapids. Here's what we know. Police say the truck driver hit the back of the buggy that was carrying nine people. A seven year old girl an eight, a nine year old girl and a 12 year old girl were all killed. Six other people had life threatening injuries. The driver of the pickup was not hurt. That crash is still being investigated. New surveillance video shows an SUV ramming right into an east side business. It happened earlier this month on East Warren near Connor Street. Detroit police say that the two men connected to this theft also broke in the same business in September, getting away with cash and other items. In the first burglary, they drove away in a gold grand marquee. In this instance, the break in, they used a Dodge Durango to slam right into it. It is 536 on your Monday morning and down in Texas, police are trying to sort out this disturbing attack. A man dressed as Santa shoots four people at a Halloween party. And in the carport this morning, the World Series is looking more like a home run derby. Now some players say 
something is very different about the baseballs being used in the games. Jason will explain that ahead at 6 o'clock. Whether you heard and saw a smash and grab all caught on camera, we'll tell you what this bad guy walked away with. It's very concerning. Right now, it's Welcome back, everybody. At 540 new today, the governor of Puerto Rico has now terminated that controversial energy contract for the past week. A $300 million contract with a small Montana company called Whitefish Energy has come under fire after it came out. The company only had two full time employees when they won the contract. Congress and FEMA raised questions about whether the company was well equipped enough to respond to the massive amount of damage they were going to rebuild the infrastructure there. Meanwhile, about 70% of Puerto Rico still remains without power more than a month after Hurricane Maria hit the island. In Seattle now, a majority of the Houston Texan players took a knee during the national anthem in an attempt to send a message to their own bopping Nair. More than 30 members of the Texans took part in the protest and it's said to be in response to McNair's we can't have the inmates running the prison comment that was made at the owners meetings earlier this month. Seven members of the Seahawks, Seahawks also sat or took a knee. McNair has since issued two public apologies since his comment. Oakland Athletics catcher Bruce Maxwell is in hot water. Police say that he pointed a gun at a food delivery woman in Arizona. Scottsdale police say that officers went to Maxwell's home on Saturday night after getting a call about a person with a gun. Maxville was booked on charges of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and disorderly conduct. He made headlines last month when he became the first MLB player to kneel in protest during the national anthem. Communities all over Metro Detroit took advantage of the clear weather this weekend, holding some trunk or treat events. Michigan State Police welcomed hundreds of children to their event in Taylor. The event included a vote for the best decorated patrol car and plenty and plenty of goodies to take home. And in the spirit of the season, President Trump and the First Lady are going to be giving out sweet treats on the South Lawn of the White House today. And the President also handed out candy to children of the White House media in the Oval Office on Friday. The First Lady trick-or-treaters will be getting presidential M&Ms. Children from more than 20 schools in Maryland, Virginia, and the District of Columbia, as well as military families have been invited. I wonder what a presidential M&M is. I know it probably Sounds has like the, the crest on there. So yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Might even want to eat that. No, I think you just want to save, save it. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's now time to reveal more winners from our special vote for the best Halloween edition. Yes, and this time it's the winner of the best pet costume <laughs> and the winner is. Oh, wow. <laughs> now that is a good costume. Yes, that is Maze the wolf spider. And pretty good costume indeed. Congratulations to you on winning. In second place, Romeo uh, the Pumpkin. And third place was Angel Perry. If you'd like to see the pictures of those winners, along with all the other entries, you can head on over to clickondetroit.com slash for the best. I hope our Paula Tubman was not watching that because she is deathly afraid of spiders. <laughs> I could hear her scream right now. <laughs> And then there are those people that just don't like you to dress your pets in costumes anyway. But that didn't look uncomfortable. In fact, as cold as it's going to be tomorrow night, it looks like that would actually keep the dog kind of warm. Look at these temperatures right now. These are pretty close to average, actually. 35, 36, 37 degrees pretty much across the board. The wind is not too bad right now, but the wind is going to pick up as we move through the course of the day. Now, if you're traveling out east this morning, there could be some delays. I've checked the airports, no delays yet, but again, air travel is still very, very light at this hour, but this is a pretty big storm that's affecting New England. It's going to be gradually pulling out during the day, but the damage will be done this morning. Again, there probably will be some delays, but for us, much quieter starts the day. We did have a little ribbon of clearing that's moved off to the east as clouds have rolled back in and we have a cold front back to the west and it's not so much with the front itself, but behind the front that we're going to see most of our shower activity developing today. Let me show that to you here on the computer model. So here we are right now. Things again pretty quiet. Now once the front comes through there is and that'll be early this afternoon. There's just a small chance of a shower late morning, early afternoon, but behind it that cold air streaming across the lake. That's going to generate some lake effect rain showers, although there will be some spots where you do see a little mixing in there. And so mostly rain showers again toward evening as things cool off. There could be a little sleet mixed in a little wet snowflake, but these will gradually wind 
wind down a bit during the night. Notice it could see a few wet snowflakes in a couple of spots overnight, but again, nothing of any consequence. Don't don't worry about this stuff yet. And then as you get into tomorrow, another little ribbon with scattered showers develops mid afternoon. This is four o'clock. Now I know the kids are gonna be a little nervous at that time, but I think all of this activity is going to quickly wind down by seven, eight o'clock. So if you're heading out with the kids, uh, yeah, after 6 30, 7 o'clock, I think you're going to be fine and it's just going to be windy and cold. I'll have the forecast for Halloween in just a moment. But for today, we have a high temperature of 47 degrees. The showers develop, particularly this afternoon. And with that wind that could gust to 30 miles per hour, man, if you're caught out in those showers and it's 30 miles an hour, gusty winds and 47 degrees, that's, I guess that qualifies as pretty nasty. Now on the seven day, what I want you to focus on really are the temperatures. First three days of the week are in the 40s. Then we start warming up with some 50s and maybe a 60 in there, but that doesn't happen until later in the week. Today, we're dealing with, or I should say Halloween, we're dealing with temperatures around 40. That's what the thermometer is going to say, but the wind chill will be in the 30s. And by the way, I'm getting a lot of compliments about Frank here, but last year we had the dancing mummy and we're, we had to bring it back. This thing is so, look at this guy. I mean, it's just, you know, it just makes you want to, you know, there we go. Do that little twist thing there. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, everybody likes the dancing mummy. We, uh, we had to bring it back this year, but, uh, but, Oh, that, the sound effects are even, even better. It. All right, come on, kid. Here we go. Let's oh, do this. Oh, there yeah, go. there we go. There, there we go. go. Oh, yeah. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> now, as long as we, uh, we better get to traffic. We're going to have no time. Do you have anything to talk about? Oh, well, of course we have. always have stuff to talk about, but you can't forget. <laughs> mummy. There's the mummy. <laughs> and the Frankenstein dance. I like that one, too. All right, good morning, guys. We are looking good out here. No accidents to report at this time, so we... Uh, don't have to worry about that this morning, but we've got construction always talking about that. We want to let you know about construction over on the lodge, the north and southbound lanes between Forest and Grand River. One lane block there. This starts at 9 a.m. and it's going to be a continuous project wrapping up at 3 p.m. on Friday. So you could see a little bit of a slowdown if you're headed in the downtown area. Also, Westmont I-696 between Greenfield and Southfield Road. There's going to be only going to be one lane open there between the hours of 9 p.m. and 5 a.m., but sometime between 11 p.m. and 5 p.m., Expect a potential 15 minute closure uh, because of this construction. So in the meantime, if you do run into one of those closures, you can use one of the detour, get, follow the detour signs to get around that. Back to you. All right, Kim, thank you. I'm wondering why she doesn't have it like a da dancing traffic cone or something. <laughs> no, I'll we'll have to work on that. <laughs> Maybe that's what she'll go as Halloween. It is 547, everybody. Let's get into some stories that you might have missed. There was this really bold burglar who walked into a gun shop. This is in upstate New York and then walked out with stolen goods and the whole robberation was caught on camera. <laughs> yeah, take a look at it all go down from the store surveillance camera. You can see the burglar break right through the door with what looks like a crowbar and then breaks open all the display cases despite the alarm howling <laughs> and calmly picks up handguns from inside the case and all police say that this burglar got at least five weapons. And that's really scary because then a lot of times those end up on the black market and yeah, it's you know. very scary. <sighs> well, in other news this morning, the inaugural women's convention held at Cobo Center over the last few days here in Detroit came to a close yesterday. The event started on Friday with a fiery speech from actress Rose McGowan. And then on Saturday, Congresswoman Maxine Waters delivered the keynote address. There she is. The event wrapped up with a performance from the Detroit Women's Chorus and in total, more than 4,000 people attended this weekend long convention. Yeah, it's a big weekend here in downtown Detroit. It certainly was. There's always a lot going on. Uh, we do want to update you on this picture that has gone viral. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen it and <laughs> I'm sure you at home have seen it too. We're here to uh, clear out whether this is fact or fiction. It's a, a picture of a mini dole salad that has sparked some outrage from kids, from trick or treaters and candy lovers. <laughs> the picture was posted initially by Adam Padala and it went viral as trick or treaters feared that they could see these <laughs> instead of candy in their bags. However, this was nothing more than a Halloween trick. Somebody created it. Dole has come out saying that the photo is not of a real product that they plan to offer. However, the company is having some fun with the whole thing, complimenting the graphic artist work of uh, the fake snack and saying, well, why stop at just salads? Why not have a, a mini package of broccoli or Brussels sprouts or or carrots? Now that I could see. A bag of lettuce, not so much, but a little bag, a little baby carrots. I mean, let me I'd just that. let me just say for all the people out there that are thinking, you not know, for Halloween though. An uh, apple <laughs> is what we could offer. Like, no, right. no, I would not rather for Halloween, but maybe in your kids, you know, lunch pail for school. There you go. And I feel like, you know, if you do feel you want to give a healthy option, 
Give it as an option. Have the candy, but then be like, then also, you want an apple? Right. No one will take it. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I can guarantee you that. <laughs> They're but, uh, out for don't, the candy. Don't, don't give me an apple after yeah. I knocked on your door. <laughs> I'm saying that as if I'm going trick-or-treating. <laughs> uh, but tomorrow, speaking of Halloween, it's a, a big time of year for us, as always. Yes, it is a very big time of year because we like to dress up, too. Every year we do it. We surprise you with our big costume reveal on Halloween. So how about we take another look at some of the highlights from years gone by? To. Yes. <laughs> Watch news today on WDIV. Everrod and Rhonda are breaking the news. It's the show no one thought would happen, but everyone will be talking about. Aretha Franklin. Ooh, I have so much R E S P E C T for you, Detroit. I just called to say I love you. It's gonna be a bar with the bar the bar. We laugh oh, every single time. Yes. I'm sure you are laughing at home too. Your Stevie Wonder though is one of my favorites. You nailed it. But you gave Aretha a run for her money. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Tomorrow morning we're gonna make you laugh as well again. We're gonna be revealing our costumes for this year. And I do mean costumes. I'm going to yes. give you that little bit of a hint. Maybe some wardrobe changes. Mm -hmm. You never know. And you will laugh. You will laugh yeah, you hard. Because <laughs> one of us is wearing some short shorts. <laughs> and I'm not going to say who. 551 <laughs> is your time, everybody. There you go. There's the hint we're giving you. <laughs> New this morning, a church targeted by racist vandals. And a woman is attacked inside of a busy restaurant reportedly because of who she's with. That and more when Local 4 News Today comes right back. Keep it here. On the next Live in the D, something new in town for snack lovers. Plus, what you should do when bad customer service drives you crazy. Today at 10 a.m. on Local 4. Tonight at 10. All right, let's get you going here. It's Monday morning. It's dry, but it's a kind of a chilly, but typically chilly start for the day based on late October standards. We're in the mid 30s right now, uh, clouding up and uh, we're gonna be in the mid 40s by noon. Slight chance of a late morning shower, better chance for scattered showers this afternoon. It's going to get windy today too. So with a high of 47 degrees and winds that could gust to 30 miles per hour, I'm telling you, it's going to get kind of nasty out for parts of the afternoon. Kim? Oh, well, all right. Well, thanks for the warning, Paul. This is a problem we want to let you know about if you're headed out the door right now. Over on southbound I-75, just past I-696, we do have our first accident of the morning, blocking the right shoulder. But taking a look at the map here, we can see the delays aren't bad. Just something to be cautious of while traveling this way. All right, thank you, Kim. New today, vandals target a Missouri church with racist graffiti. Parishioners found a swastika, KKK, and racial slurs spray painted on the front doors of the Concord Fortress of Hope Church in Kansas City. Investigators are saying that the vandals also broke into vending machines and the church's financial office, setting a chair on fire. Now the hope is it is a reward of $5,000, hoping that that reward will lead to investigators to the vandals. So there was a White Lives Matter rally in Shelbyville, Tennessee, and hours after this, a fight breaks out between a group of white supremacists and an interracial couple. The couple was inside of the corner pub in Brentwood when a group of about 20 to 30 white men and women came in and sat right behind them. Well, they asked her to leave her boyfriend and join their table. When she refused, there was an argument that started and it continued, moved outside even. Members of that group actually hit this woman in the face and beat her, believe it or not, Police are still investigating this assault. And a man dressed as Santa Claus arrested and accused of shooting four people at a Halloween party. This happened in Austin, Texas. Two people were critically injured. Police say that the gunman and the victims all knew each other. Investigators are working to sort out who among the group was invited to the party. The suspect in the Santa suit is now in custody. This is going to be on the naughty list this year. Mm -hmm. Actually, he'll be in jail this year. That's a whole right. other story. It is 5.57, everybody. Halloween is tomorrow, and even still, we're looking ahead to Christmas with a help me hang consumer alert. I guess right around the corner. Early. <laughs> Experts say that many are planning to spend more of this holiday season than last year. A survey shows that people will spend on average $967.13, nearly a thousand bucks a person. That's up three and a half percent from last year. Also, 59% of people will be looking to do their shopping online. That number just keeps growing. Yeah. Yes.
Avoid the lines. It is 557 still coming up all new at 6 o'clock. Local stories for you from Detroit, Allen Park and Royal Oak. Also ahead, a Hollywood A-lister facing some serious allegations and his response is creating quite the firestorm of its own. The scandal surrounding Kevin Spacey. We'll have that for you this morning. And a popular pain reliever being linked to a behavior disorder in children. The story that soon to be moms need to hear. That and more when we come back in one minute. Keep it here. It's live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Who will be charged? The first domino in the Russia investigation set to fall today as investigators looking into Russian interference with the 2016 presidential election are expected to announce at least one indictment today. Plus cracking down on arson. Curfews are in place and volunteers are on patrols as Angels Night approaches. Accepted. Oh, so close, but tamed in prime time. The Lions unable to find the end zone all night as they drop their third straight game in a row. And we're a better team than that. We're yeah, better than that record. That's very true. I know at least two Steeler fans that are very excited uh, this morning. I have a, mm. a really good friend who's been rooting for them, you know, for quite some time. So well, there were a lot of Steelers fans there. Yeah, there were, but definitely disappointed waking up this morning, hoping that we could at least be at 500, Paul, but it just wasn't our night last night. No, it wasn't. My next door neighbor, Alan, he's a big, he's from Pittsburgh, so he's a big Steelers fan, and I'm not talking to him. So anyhow, uh, let's talk about what's going on weather-wise. We're dry to start the day, so we have dry roads. You'll hear from Kim in a minute, so that's at least a little bit of good news. Temperatures in the mid to upper 30s right now. The wind, there's a bit of a breeze out there, nothing real terrible, but the wind is going to pick up as we move through the day. So here's the dryness that we have, and you see a little splotches back here to the west. Now, we do have a cold front back here. That's going to bring in a reinforcing shot of cold air that's going to stay with us for the next couple of days. And it's also going to energize this lake effect machine here. So we'll talk about that coming up in about 10 minutes. But for today, we're looking at uh, basically mainly late morning into the afternoon, scattered showers, windy, high temperature, 47 degrees. I'll have that uh, Halloween forecast for you guys coming up in just a little bit. All right, well, hopefully we can get the rain out of here today, so we'll at least have a dry day for the trick-or-treaters tomorrow. Yeah, and then on top of that, we're talking about traffic this morning and any problems we might encounter. Anything so far? Yeah, well, it sounds like tonight will be the really tricky commute, but right now we're talking about your morning commute. If you take a look at the big picture here, we are looking pretty good. However, I want you to watch out for one problem uh, if you're headed through this, uh, the Royal Oak area. We do have I-75 southbound lanes just past I-696. This accident here blocking your right shoulder, so we may see a little little bit of a delay in that area, but nothing too bad to slow you down. Maybe just give yourself a couple of extra minutes before you head out the door this morning. Back to you. All right, Kim, thank you. It is 601. The firebugs are out this time of year. Arsonists targeting vacant homes in Detroit because of Halloween. Yes, but where there are arsonists, there are also thousands of volunteers and also a curfew looking to stop them. We are talking about Angels Night efforts. Coco McAvoy joining us now live with more. And this annual campaign has been hugely successful. Yes, good morning, Rhonda and Everett. It started off as an anti-arson campaign, but some people have participated in it since the 80s, and they say they see, they've seen a lot of change, and that's, they say that's in part due to the Angels Night volunteers. On the first night of Angels Night, four homes that were likely vacant went up in flames. Both buildings on both sides, the ones that just collapsed, uh, it, it caught those going and it actually got a fourth building. As firefighters battled the fires, a group of Angels Night volunteers prepared for duty. Tonight will be the second night volunteers serve as lookouts for the Detroit Police Department. I understand that Detroit is a very, very important community because of its residents and we appreciate everyone's help. Several years ago, 100 fires were set the night before Halloween. Last year, there were 59 fires. 20 of them were considered suspicious. We have extra companies on duty. We have the volunteers going out. So we're hoping that, 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 this, yeah, that this is not going to be the norm for the next few days. The Angels Night volunteers are dedicated to keeping the city safe. This is my city. This is where I was born. I, wouldn't, I couldn't think of doing anything different than showing up and making a difference right here at home. The volunteers have seen a lot of progress over the years. We used to really advertise it as the anti-arson campaign, but now it's just a community fellowship kind of campaign. Residents and volunteers will work together over the next couple of days to make sure things run smoothly this Halloween. 
And of course, residents can also do their part by keeping their porch lights on and reporting any suspicious activity to police. Back to you. Yeah, let's hope that everybody will participate in doing that. Let's talk about this curfew, though. It's for minors, obviously, and it continues this evening, right? Yes, it starts at 7 o'clock this evening and it goes until 6 a.m. tomorrow. And that, of course, means that any minors under the age of 17 must be accompanied by a parent or a legal guardian if they're out past that time. All righty, Coco McAvoy reporting live for us this morning. Thank you, Coco. It is 604 and an investigation continues after a man is killed in a deadly accident here in the city of Detroit. Police say that a vehicle driven by that 29 year old man was heading northbound on Gratiot when it crossed into the southbound lanes hitting another vehicle. The 29 year old was killed and the driver of the other vehicle was hurt. However, their condition is not known. Today we are expected to learn who will be the first charged in the investigation into Russian involvement in last year's presidential election. This comes after the federal grand jury working on the investigation approved its first charges on Friday. President Trump and his administration have repeatedly denied any wrongdoing and stay right here. Coming up, we're going to have a live report with Tracy Potts at 630 from Capitol Hill. Well, back here at home now, the boil water advisory for most of Oakland County affected by last week's water main break has been lifted. But this morning, Northwest Farmington Hills still under an advisory after a loss of water pressure on Friday led to a whole new set of water quality tests in the area of Halstead and 14 Mile. So the advisory is expected to be lifted for that area later this morning. Initially, more than 300,000 people in 11 Oakland County communities were impacted by that advisory. So glad to see that almost everybody uh, has their water back up and running right now. But again, we still feel for Absolutely. people in Farmington. And definitely go to our website at clickondetroit.com because even though the advisory has been lifted, there are quite a few things that you need to do to make sure your water is safe to drink. Absolutely. Again. Let's talk about the Lions. Well, do we have to? Yeah. Yeah, they were in the national spotlight Sunday mm -hmm. night football looking for a win against the Steelers on uh, Sunday. Yeah, that Steelers defense, though, kept us from getting in the end zone the entire night. In five trips to the red zone, the Lions just could not score a touchdown, the biggest of which was late in the fourth quarter. We were hoping that we could pull off a win at the last minutes. Matt Stafford almost threw an interception instead in the fourth quarter. The Steelers held on to win this one 20 to 15. Stafford and Coach Caldwell talked about the red zone issues after the game. A team like that against a good football team, you just unless you score touchdowns, it's very difficult to beat them kicking field goals all day. Shouldn't execute, you know. Um, we were close in a lot of uh, on a lot of plays. Um, whether I missed a throw by uh, you know a minute or two, or we uh, you know didn't catch a ball, or you know whatever it is, it's uh, you know it's obviously frustrating. Definitely frustrating for the fans as well. I think we're just a better team than what our record shows. We're now three and four. The Lions fans, of course, have a lot to say about last night's game as well. Let's turn things over to Jason Carr, joining us in studio this morning. A fan still in support. We're gonna find out. What about you guys? I mean, I think that if your defense holds the killer bees to 20 points, I mean, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. Antonio Brown, he's like the one of the best in the game, if we're not good, the we're best. Yeah. Le'Veon Bell, one of the best, if not the best Absolutely. at his position. So we'll see how Lions fans comment right now. See, uh, Caldwell is a great game manager, Ooh. said no one ever. Ooh, shade. Wow, Scott, why do people continue to watch these losers? Save yourself the agony and stop watching. They're not worth it. Another one bites the dust. Well, that was 1980. Uh, Jim, nothing ever changes for the Lions. Bad coaching, bad quarterback, bad team. Jeez. Ouch. Our shady viewers this morning. Stephanie says they have nine games left, everyone. Let's not lose our cool just yet. Thank you, okay. Stephanie. All right, Stephanie. <laughs> And on a Somebody. positive note. <laughs> I mean, the Steelers are probably the best team in football. Right. We only lost by five in prime time. So exactly. we'll see how the fans feel after they head to Lambeau to face the Packers on Monday night football yes. coming up. Back to you guys. Without Aaron Rodgers. Without Aaron Rodgers. So then okay. if they win, it's an asterisk. And, you know. True. But we do need to win. <laughs> we need to get back to at least 500. Yeah. All, All right, Jason. Jason. Thank you. It is 6.08, and it has been one wild and awesome World Series. Game after game, so exciting. But now, players, current and former, are saying that something is amiss. Something is just not right. There is conspiracy being fueled after last night's home run filled game. I'll tell you more. Yeah, it's got to do with the balls. But first, they're meant to help you through retirement, but should you trust them? Rob Maloney explains everything you need to know this morning about annuities. That's coming up next in our Money Monday segment. The Detroit. 
Good Monday morning. We're talking annuities this week, and let's take a minute because a lot of people get solicited to buy these things. And there are a lot of different kinds. There's a lot of confusion. There is fixed, variable, deferred, immediate term, certain, single premium. But those aren't the things you necessarily need to buy, worry about. The first thing you need to worry about is the health of the insurance company. And there's a way to check this. You go to the AM Best website. But then you have to ask the person selling you this, what is the annuity's investment performance? But then this is the thing about annuities that really concerns me because it's about the fees. You have to ask, do the fees exceed the investment performance? Because if they do, then what's the point in even having it as an investment? Are there initial or annual fees? That's another big problem. Are there surrender charges with your annuity? You need to get all of these things answered. And then, of course, if there are these fees, if so, when do the surrender charges disappear? All big questions, important questions you need to ask. And so my thought is, is that until you have all of these answers, don't even consider an annuity. For more information, go to the Maloney Money page at clickondetroit.com. Welcome back, everybody. We are going to get to World Series action in just a moment. It has been really good. In fact, let's let's go over to Jason and talk a little bit more about how exciting it's been. And now a little controversy. Yeah, dealing with the balls that they've, they've been playing with. What's going on there? Well, it's no secret there was an era of steroid use in Major League Baseball. And during that time, there were a lot of home runs. Well, what if the league was trying to make all that happen again without steroids? Some players seem to think that's the case. Home runs all over the place. They're pointing to the home run filled World Series between the Houston Astros and the LA Dodgers with the long ball flying out. Last night in Houston, there were seven home runs as the Astros beat the Dodgers in extra innings. That brings the series total to 22. So what's the deal? Are the baseballs juiced? Some players new and old believe the balls have been juiced. Take a look at this home run from George Springer. When it lands, something explodes. Could it have been a firework or could it have been the ball? Realize this role and how difficult it is. You lose an inch or two under your fastball when you're not as fresh as you want to be. Now, if you ask the Astros pitchers, they'll tell you something is not right. Ask about the possibility of the league juicing balls. Forward Tiger Justin Verlander said Sunday, quote, I think it's pretty clear. I think our commissioner has said publicly that they wanted more offense in the game. I'm pretty sure I'm not fabricating a quote here when I say that, end quote. He went on to say the balls used seem slicker. Fellow Astro Dallas Keiko said last week he thinks the balls are juiced. <laughs> During the game last night, a few players took to Twitter, including retired pitcher Dan Heron. He said, so thankful they juiced the ball after I retired. <laughs> wow. The carport is closed. What does that even mean? Yeah, I don't know. What that <laughs> Juicing <means>. the ball. <laughs> it's a tighter wind, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it's made for some very exciting baseball. Yeah. And hopefully none of the players will get accused. We don't want one of those Tom Brady situations. I was just going to say, Tom Brady, <laughs> what Tom Brady is going on in baseball right. now. Oh, boy. All right. It is uh, 614, everybody. We do want to turn things over to meteorologist Paul Gross for weather and traffic on the fours. Yeah, we're going to try and juice the weather so we can warm it up tomorrow night because I'm telling you, look at this. Here's the Halloween forecast and look at this. 40 degrees is what's on the thermometer, but it'll be breezy. So wind chill is going to be in the 30s tomorrow night. Wind chill is going to be in the 30s. So make sure you bundle up the kids under those costumes. It is going to be one chilly Halloween. It's a kind of a typically chilly start to the day based on uh, late October standards. Uh, look at this. Boy, if you went to the weather store and you uh, chose 37, uh, you got a pretty good deal. Look at this. It's 37 almost everywhere. Okay, 36 in Port Huron and Sandusky, but most of the area is pretty much in that mid 30s range and uh, we're going to only go up a few degrees as we move through the day. Probably just into the mid 40s for a high. So we'll uh, talk about that in a second. Right now, let's get you going with what's happening. And out east, this is that big storm. Been talking about it all weekend long. And so there are probably going to be some air delays out there. So we'll certainly keep an eye on that for you. No delays yet. I've been checking, but we're going to watch that for you. So we're dry right now. Cold front back to the west. There's not much going on with the front right now, but that's because it's just on the west shore of Lake Michigan. 
the activity with this front is going to be behind it. So once the front comes through, that cold air coming across the lake, especially early in the season, that lake gets real active. We'll see showers developing, especially this afternoon, and the wind is going to kick up today, probably about 30 mile an hour gusts. So it's going to get kind of nasty for part of the afternoon. Now tomorrow morning, we're going to start quiet. There could be a couple of wet snowflakes around tonight into tomorrow, but nothing that does anything to you. It's just more for effect than anything else. Now tomorrow afternoon, not as numerous as today, but a few little scattered little showers could pop up tomorrow afternoon. Notice the time here. It's tomorrow afternoon's rush hour, but it's also around the time the kids are getting ready to get out and uh, and go and get some candy because they don't already have enough sugar in their diets. And but that's going to that's the any shower that we get in the afternoon tomorrow should diminish very rapidly around six, seven o'clock. So I think we are going to be fine for the kids heading out from a wet standpoint. It should be a dry Halloween Wednesday morning, starting with some sunshine, then the clouds increase and we are going to see uh, basically uh, uh, a, a, a rain shower come in Wednesday night into Thursday, but today 47 for the high. We already talked about that and just notice the warming trend, Kim, as you go through the week and we have the weather window to talk about and the look at the flags there with the Rensen. Oh man, it's going to be a breezy one today. Get ready. Hang on to your hats. Ooh, I love that shot. It shows you how windy it is out there. All right, good morning, everyone. We've got one problem to warn you about as you're headed out the door towards I-75. We've got a crash over on the southbound lanes of 75 just past I-696. It's blocking the right shoulder. I do want to show you a closer look of what this crash looks like right now with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. As you can see there, it is blocking the right shoulder. But the good news is there's no backups. Traffic getting by just fine in this area. Just something to be cautious of, especially if you're traveling over on that right lane. Be careful of that accident. Back to you. All right, Kim, thank you. It is 618 now. Let's get into today's consumer headlines. We're talking about this major candy company that's taking the wraps off of its newest candy concoction here in Metro Detroit. Plus, another major retailer will stay closed on Black Friday. But first, we're talking about gas prices. They're going down this time, so some good news at the gas pump. Let's check in with Aaron Age. He joins us live from NASDAQ this morning. We like it when the gas prices go down. Indeed. Good morning, Everod. Gas prices in Michigan are down about seven cents. A new statewide average is two dollars fifty-one cents a gallon, and this is according to AAA Michigan. The price is about thirty-eight cents more than a year ago, and in Metro Detroit, gas is down about two cents a gallon. REI is closing again on Black Friday. It's the third year in a row that the outdoor equipment retailer is going to keep its doors closed on the big shopping day. Now, in addition to that, REI is also not processing any online orders on Black Friday. And again, REI will pay its 12,000 employees for the day. It encourages them to spend the day enjoying the outdoors. The Hershey Company picked Metro Detroit to reveal its newest candy concoction. The company unveiled a new candy bar yesterday during the Royal Oaks 34th Annual Halloween Spooktacular. About 30,000 samples of Reese's outrageous candy bars were handed out. The candy features milk chocolate, peanut butter, and caramel with mini Reese's pieces mixed in. The chocolate treat is not expected to hit stores until May 2018. Evrod? Okay, I'm, I'm a fan of uh, regular Reese's, but all right, I'll try it. Aaron, thank you. It is 619. I mean, like, why Reese's mess with a good thing? Reese's. I say Reese's Pieces. Mm -hmm. I know you that, say. I, I know that's the way you're supposed to say it, but when it just comes out of my mouth, it always comes out Reese's. Yeah. And then you feel like you have to say Pieces, and it's all wrong. <laughs> I know I'm not the only well, one, though. What is a Pieces? <laughs> Either know. Pieces or Pisces. Right. It's Pieces. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I will not tell you what Paul just said. I don't know why he said that. <laughs> Hopefully right, you didn't hear it. I know. <laughs> It'll Let's get spoil your breakfast. <laughs> All right. Let's get into today's winner for Vote for the Best Halloween edition. Yes, our winner for the best scary attraction is the Haunted Garage in Gross Point Woods. Have you been there? Congratulations to you. And also in second place, Hus, or Hush haunted attraction that one is in Westland and in third exit 13 haunted house up in Genesee County. So congratulations to all of our finalists and winner. I can't do a haunted house. I'm not, I'm not responsible for the reaction that right. I might give, you know, people <laughs> yeah. jumping out and all that stuff. <laughs> it is 620 everybody, a new scandal in Hollywood. Academy Award winner Kevin Spacey addresses sexual assault allegations and also delivers a big surprise in his statement. We'll tell you what that is. Also ahead, a new warning for pregnant women, the popular over-the-counter painkiller that could double your child's risk for ADHD. And before we go to break, we wanted you to meet today's Facebook friend for the day. This is Kelly Dorsett from Detroit, and he is a U.S. Navy and Army vet who served in Desert Storm with 
uh, three children. All right. Well, we want to mail you a $25 gift card to National Coney Island just for being our friend of the day. That'll buy you a few Coney's. So congratulations to you, Kelly, and to everybody else. If you want to be our next friend of the day, make sure you like the Local 4 Facebook page and then just follow the friend of the day tab. We're back in a moment. All righty, you're probably thinking kids got to head off to the bus stop this morning. What do we have? Well, we have dry conditions right now. Uh, temperatures about 37 degrees out there, and it's going to be dry through the morning for the morning bus stop. But this afternoon, they better be prepared for this. Windy showers, highs only in the mid 40s. It's going to be a little nasty when the kids uh, come home from school. Kim? Not sound fun for your evening commute, but uh, we're talking about your morning commute right now. We have an accident over on the southbound lanes of I-75 just past I-696. It's blocking your right shoulder, uh, not causing any delays. So while driving by that area, don't expect delays. Just expect to be cautious of that accident. Kim, thank you. At 625, let's get into good health. Long-term use of acetaminophen during pregnancy could put children at higher risk of ADHD. Experts say that the active ingredient in main over-the-counter medications is commonly prescribed to reduce, reduce pain and fevers. Data shows that women who use the medicines for 29 days or more during pregnancy had a 220% increase in having a child with ADHD, which is twice the expected risk. However, those who used it for less than seven days had a decreased risk. Pretty alarming. All right, coming up at 630, local stories for you from Detroit, Ann Arbor, and Allen Park. Plus, it happened again, a crazy crash right into a local business, and police say this is no accident. Plus, big NBA stars turn into <laughs> Big babies. See, this is why I don't do haunted houses. It's <laughs> next to today's top video when we come back in one minute. I cannot wait to see this. If you've got. <laughs> see? <laughs> It's so much more fun to watch other people being scared. Right, that's what I'm experience saying. Experience it for yourself. Even big, bad NBA players get scared. Look at them holding on to each other. This is viral video. It's uh, of some New Orleans Pelicans going through a haunted house. You see Anthony Davis, DeMarcus Cousins, and a few others broke the number one rule for haunted houses. <laughs> no running. <laughs> Guess they're not so tough after all. <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing this. Oh man, right? they ran right out of there. <laughs> man, oh man. We're back in a minute, everybody. <laughs> Eyebrows were. Today, live from downtown Detroit, local four news today at 6:30 starts now. Indictments are imminent. Charges are coming later this morning in the Russia investigation with involving the FBI. We're gonna take you live to Washington, DC, where President Trump is already responding. And a local mom takes a big risk with her own children so she could go gambling at a local casino this morning. She will learn her fate. And Paul learning just what big shoes they are to fill. <laughs> Absolutely. When Brandon's gone and the telestration time you know, arrives. I, I'm not a funny guy. I'm, He's I'm stressing funny out. I'm a plate of jello. I'm supposed to telestrate something. I don't know whether to make a monster or something. I don't know. I to do that, do that, do that. Okay. That's that's telescope. Well, you can't really see it. It's blue there. Oh, but, we're going no, to have to send lame. you to telestration okay, I'll come up with something else in, in a second. <laughs> now we see just how hard it is. We put a lot of pressure on Brandon. No wonder he had to take a couple days off. That was an absolute epic <laughs> fail, Paul. Yes. Like, Where's I Where's mean, the womp womp music? Exactly. Like a, a two. <laughs> there we go. I mean, we should have had that queued up ready to go the moment he's done. Yeah. It's there you go. Sorry, the judges, though, they have the final answer there. Yeah. Let's, let's get back to Paul and see if he can recover. You're going to have to take lessons. I, I'm going to have to talk to my pal. I mean, Brandon does this really well. All right. I'm going to do something. We're going to we'll try it in a second here. All right. Right oh now, boy. let's get you out the door. Temperatures in the mid to upper 30s right now. And what we have is a dry start to the day. But back to the west, we have a cold front. All right. So let's let's do something here. OK, here's the cold front. All right. Right here. Now, that's the front edge of some colder air that's back here. All right, so that colder air, I was told to do like, maybe do like some eyes and I don't know, do something like that and I don't know, make a monster. I don't know, something like that. Anyhow, cold air is not good. Is it epic fail? Oh. It's bad. Oh, no, it's not. It's bad, it's lame, but I'm not a funny guy. But anyhow. And he would have done better than that. All right, well, let's let's just tell you that as we move through the day, showers are going to increase. I'm going to work on this stuff. And next time I'm here for Brandon, I'm going to have something epic. It will be epic. 
But in any event, we're going to have showers this afternoon and they're going to be windy showers, gusts to near 30 miles per hour, highs only in the mid 40s. Kim, rescue me, do something. <laughs> you are a funny guy. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. All right, well, good morning. <laughs> All right, I mean it, I mean it. All right, good morning guys. Let's talk about your traffic. We do have an accident to talk about over on I-75. The southbound side of 75, just past I-696 here, uh, blocking the right shoulder. Be careful of this accident. And then I also wanna let you know about that tunnel. The Windsor Tunnel is back open right now. It reopened at 5.30, um, but not for very long actually. It is planned to close down tonight for more construction. Starting at eight o'clock that will close and it's gonna remain closed until late November. But I do wanna show you our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot right now because this is a look at I-75 right at the Ambassador Bridge and since that tunnel is open you can see that uh, traffic volumes are pretty light here so we are looking good and dry conditions and visibility is a okay back to you. Sounds good Kim thank you to 632 now. She gambled and lost in ways that she probably never even imagined. Yeah, it was a big risk that she was taking. A local mom pleaded guilty to leaving her two young children, we're talking two years and younger, in a car for hours while she went inside of the MGM Grimm Casino to gamble. So today she is expected to head to jail. And Local Force Coco McAvoy joining us live now with more on this case that really outraged a lot of people. Yes, Everett and Rhonda, a lot of people were upset because the kids were left in the car alone for almost two hours. And today, Kalilai Shoot will face a judge. The case against Kalilai Shoot began in August of this year. Shoot was charged with leaving her two kids in a car in the MGM Casino parking garage while she gambled inside. Shoot's defense attorney argued her case at the time. This is the first time incident for Ms. Shute. Um, despite the severity of the circumstances, Your Honor, Ms. Shute has no primary or any type of probation or any other type of prior history. This is the type of case that obviously is, is very serious in nature. We have two minor children that are vulnerable and cannot take care of themselves. Police say Shute's two-year-old boy and six-month-old girl were found in Shute's car. The windows were left slightly cracked and were covered with blankets. The prosecutor said a person walking by noticed the children and alerted security. Doing video footage that she covered the windows so that these two children could not be seen from outside the vehicle. Uh, that the temperatures within that parking structure were between 85 and 90 degrees. The children were in the car for almost two hours. Shoot was arrested and the children were given to their father. Now, two months later, Shoot will be in court to be sentenced for the crime. And Shoot will be in court at 8.30 this morning. We'll, of course, let you know what happens. Back to you. Uh, Coco, let's talk about the jail time that she is expected to get. Do we know how long she could be sentenced for? Yes, Evrod. So she's been charged with fourth degree child abuse, and that means that she could face up to a year in prison. Well, it was a long time to leave kids in the car for. We're thankful that they're being cared for now by their by their father. Coco, thank you. It is now 634 and three young girls are killed and six others seriously injured after a pickup truck crashed right into a buggy in mid Michigan. This happened early Sunday morning in Evergreen Township, which is northeast of Grand Rapids. Police say that the truck driver hit the back of the buggy that was carrying nine people. A seven year old girl, a nine year old girl and a 12 year old girl were all killed. Six other people sustained life threatening injuries. The driver of the pickup truck was not hurt. The crash remains under investigation. Investigation. And moving on to some other stories that are making headlines here across Metro Detroit. We're going to take a look at stories from Detroit and Ann Arbor. But first, we start in Allen Park, where a multi city police chase came to an end. All right, so take a close look at this viewer video of the chases that went through Taylor. This pursuit started in Westland and it took police through local streets as well as I-94. Police are saying it was a lengthy pursuit lasting about 47 seven minutes before ending on Oakwood Boulevard in Allen Park. The suspect was being investigated for drug activity. He is in police custody right now while this case is still being investigated. 
Surveillance video shows an SUV ramming right into an east side business. This happened earlier this month on East Warren near Connor Street. Detroit police say the two men connected to this. Well, it was all part of a theft of this small business, and this is not the first time. They did it also in September, getting away with cash and other items from that store. This time around, they used that Dodge Durango to slam into the business and rob it again. And investigators say a home invasion was reported near the University of Michigan early Sunday. This happened on North Thayer, just across from the North Quad residential and academic complex. Someone entered an apartment through an unlocked door and took electronics while there were residents sleeping inside. Police are urging everyone to make sure that their doors are locked always. It is 637 here on your Monday morning and Jason is back with a look at another Hollywood scandal. Kevin Spacey facing backlash this morning following a bombshell response to some serious allegations. What he said and what he's accused of coming up. But first, Washington is on edge as we wait word on who is going to be charged in connection with the Russia investigation. We're live from the Capitol. And round one of high school football playoffs is in the books for highlights from our game of the week. You can head to the Four Frenzy page and click on Detroit.com. There you can also check out the winners of our Spirit Awards. We're back in a moment. Four. All right, welcome back, everybody. It is 641, and scandal is nothing new to politics. But this morning, Washington buzzing like never before. Absolutely. Special counsel Robert Mueller is expected to publicly announce the first indictments in his investigation into Russian meddling in the 2016 presidential election. Local force Tracy Potts is joining us live now in the nation's capital. Good morning, Tracy. Hey, Evrod Ronda, good morning, good morning, everyone. You know, it's one of those big secrets in Washington that may stay a secret until the official announcement because it's a federal grand jury and we're not supposed to get big leaks about what's been happening behind closed doors. But in the matter of hours, we could have a much better sense of where this investigation is headed. Two sources tell NBC FBI Special Counsel Robert Mueller will announce a federal grand jury indictment, charges against someone in the Russia investigation. And most of Washington is in the dark. Make no mistake, disclosing grand jury ma material is a violation of the law. We have to have the public have confidence in the fact that the grand jury system is secret and as a result, fair. Previously, law enforcement sources named former National Security Advisor Mike Flynn and former Trump campaign chair Paul Manafort as targets of this investigation into alleged Russian interference and possible collusion in the presidential election. Both deny it. The president exploded on Twitter, calling this a witch hunt. And there has been much speculation about whether or not Donald Trump would hesitate to use his pardon power. Uh, to get out of legal jeopardy and trouble, any allies of his. An indictment could provide more information for congressional committees conducting their own investigations. We continue the hard work of getting to the bottom of what happened. I have not yet seen any definitive evidence of collusion. The president's pleading, do something. Today, the special counsel will. Now, while that's happening, lawmakers here on Capitol Hill worry that it's a big distraction from what they're trying to get done here, which is tax reform. Rhonda and Everett, uh, even the president was tweeting about that. He thinks that these indictments coming out when they are all the focus on the Russia investigation, it's no coincidence that it's coming out while he's trying to get tax reform done here. But frankly, some people also think that the president's doing a lot of distracting on Twitter uh, while the first indictments and the biggest investigation of his presidency are imminent. Well, that's not the only distraction. Speaking of congressional investigations, talk about the other one that's happening, the Russia hearing that's expected later this week. Right, because remember, separately from this FBI investigation, several congressional committees are looking into uh, Russian interference, Russian collusion. That hearing that you're talking about, Rhonda, this week is Facebook, Google, and Twitter coming to Washington to talk about those thousands of ads uh, that were placed on social media and that were traced back to Russia. This happened in the run-up to the election, presumably to try to influence our vote. Mm. A lot going on there in Washington yeah, this there week, Tracy. Thank you.
It is 644 and right now we want to get to weather and traffic on the fours. Let's turn things over to meteorologist Paul Groves because we need to find out if we're going to need to wear coats over our costumes tomorrow. Yeah, and what's going on out east I see behind you. Yeah, there's a lot of trouble out east. Fortunately, this was expected trouble. Maybe it doesn't make them feel any better out there, but we knew this was coming. We talked about it last week and this is nasty stuff. The east Coast experiencing heavy rain and wind as what's left of tropical storm Philippe slams the area. Now some areas are expected to see between four and six inches of rain and along the water waves could crest up to 25 feet high. Now at last check the storm has knocked out power to more than 735,000 customers and the storm is expected to move into the Atlantic by this afternoon. So let's take a quick look at where that is right now and as you can see this is just a mess and I've been watching the uh, airline delays. I've not seen any early morning uh, flight delays in some of the major hubs here but we're going to keep an eye on that this morning. If you have travel out east this morning you could have some problems with some delays. All right our start to the day is much much, much quieter. 37 degrees across the board, at least these four weather reporting stations, Metro Airport, Ann Arbor, Pontiac, and Adrian. The wind is not too bad, less than 10 miles per hour, but that's going to pick up during the day as well. Now, if you look on the satellite loop, see this little dark area here? That is actually about a two to three hour period of clearing that moved in during the night, but that now has moved out, and we're just going to see cloudy skies with well, we have a cold front back here, but it's not so much ahead of the front, but behind the front that we're going to see the showers start to increase. And I'll tell you why in a second. So here we are starting off the day cloudy. Here comes the front. Technically, there could be a small chance for a late morning shower, but I think most of this will be this afternoon because after this front comes through, that's the floodgates opening up for the cold air to come in across that warm water of Lake Michigan. And then we're going to see scattered showers popping up. Some of them briefly could be rather robust. And by late in the afternoon or evening, there even could be a little sleet mixed in or maybe a wet snowflake tonight. But basically, much of this settles down tonight. But notice again, there could be a couple of just little wet snowflakes. Nothing that's going to do anything. Don't worry about the roads or anything. But uh, by tomorrow morning, Things are pretty quiet. Maybe a small chance for a shower developing during the afternoon tomorrow, but notice how quickly these things fizzle out. So I think we're mainly dry for the kids heading out for Halloween. And I'll have the Halloween forecast in just a second, but let's get you through today. 47 for the high. So 47, that's chilly enough. Add in wind gusting to 30 miles per hour and those showers this afternoon, it could get kind of raw out there this afternoon. So here's your seven day forecast. What I want you to focus on, 40s for highs the first three days. Then we warm up into the 50s and 60s for the rest of the week. Don't forget this weekend we set the clocks back an hour Saturday night before you go to bed. But here's Frank and look at this for the kids. Now we've been telling you for a week now. 40 degrees, the actual temperature. Wind chill will be in the 30s, so they really need to layer up. That's where Under Armour really helps out under those costumes because uh, you just you don't want to have all that bulk under the costume. It might not fit, but uh, anyhow, back to you guys at the desk. I have selective hearing because I've heard his forecast since 430 this morning. Uh -huh. I knew we were going to get in the 60s later this week. I knew it was going to be cold and windy, <laughs> rainy. You hear never heard the snow showers until just now. <laughs> I, I still didn't hear the snow showers. She's like, wait, I'm what day was that? I'm choosing not to listen to that. I said, nope, that. nope, nope, not, not hearing that. it. Not happening. Hopefully the kids have some worn costumes for tomorrow, yeah. though. Yeah, Definitely a lot of scarves and yeah. stuff like that that they can wear. Exactly. <laughs> oh, well, well, meanwhile, well, luckily all those, you know, snow, rain, Rain, that stuff. We're not dealing with that this morning. So we're taking a look at some construction that you have to watch out for today over on I-696. We're talking about the westbound side of 696 between Greenfield and Southfield Road. That is where we will see those orange barrels today. Only one lane open, but it's actually a nightly project, so hopefully it won't slow you down at all. But if you do travel during the overnight hours, keep this one in mind. Only one lane open between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. And then in that same area, expect somewhere between that time 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. there may be a 15 minute closure. So in that case, if you do run into that closure, you may want to just follow the detour signs instead. Now let's take a look at our roads right now with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shop. This is a look at Southfield Freeway right at I-96. It is good to go here. Visibility is great and we do have dry roads to start off the day. No accidents in this area and we are actually accident free. We had that accident over on I-75, but that has cleared. Back to you. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Kim. Meanwhile, it's 648 and Hollywood is hit with yet another sex assault scandal. And Jason, this time this involves an A-list actor. Yeah, the floodgates are officially open. Kevin Spacey is accused of making a sexual advance toward actor Anthony Rapp when Rapp was just a teenager. During an interview with BuzzFeed, Rapp, who is currently starring in the Star Trek TV reboot, says the incident happened when he was 14 and Spacey was 26. Both men at that time were working on Broadway and Rapp went on to go to a party at Spacey's apartment. 
Now, he describes the House of Cards actor as very drunk at the time of the alleged encounter. Spacey issued a statement on Twitter saying, quote, I'm beyond horrified to hear this story. I honestly do not remember the encounter. It would have been over 30 years ago, but if I did behave then, as he describes, I owe him the sincerest apology for what would have been deeply inappropriate drunken behavior. And I am sorry for the feelings he describes having carried with him all of these years. Now, that wasn't all he said. In the same statement, Spacey decided to come out as a gay man. He said he's had relationships with both men and women over the years, but now considers himself to be gay. Celebrities are reacting to these simultaneous bombshells. Comedian Larry Wilmore tweeted, Kevin Spacey's comment was wrong on so many levels. Wanda Sykes, never one to hide her opinion. No, 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 you do not get to choose to hide under the rainbow, kick rocks. Also adding to the discussion, Billy Eichner, that Kevin Spacey's statement, nope, absolutely not. Nope, Kevin Spacey. Clearly not getting any support as sexual harassment and assault is forefront in Hollywood in wake of the Harvey Weinstein scandal. We'll have to wait now and see how the Academy Award winner responds to the backlash. Go back to you. All righty, Interesting Jason. decision on his part to come out. At this time. Yeah. yeah. It's 6.50, everybody. We've got your stories to watch for when we come right back. Keep it here. Sky. Welcome back, everybody. In just a matter of hours, we could learn who will be the first charge in the Russia investigation. On Friday, the grand jury approved the charges recommended by special counsel Robert Mueller. President Trump and his administration have denied any wrongdoing. Also, we expect to find out if the Boil Water Advisory for Northwest Farmington Hills in the area of 14 Mile and Halstead will be lifted. The advisory has been in effect since last week. Advisories for the rest of the Oakland County communities affected have been lifted. The mother who left her six month old daughter and two year old son in a car while she went gambling inside of MGM Casino for nearly two hours is going to learn her fate in court today. Klee Shute is being charged with fourth degree child abuse and could face up to one year in prison. Detroit's Angels Night Campaign has officially started. A Halloween curfew will be in effect until Wednesday morning, and all minors must be accompanied by an adult between 7 p.m. and 6 a.m. Unless you're going to school or work, you can help out by turning on your porch light and keeping an eye on your block. Now let's send things into the Local 4 newsroom and check in with Jason. Good morning. Good morning today on ClickOnDetroit.com. Screaming kids, ringing doorbells, terrified pets. Halloween can be frightening for our furry friends, but experts have a few simple steps to ease their stress. That is on our All for Pets page. Plus a rough night for the Lions. What's next um, after their primetime Sunday lost? Loss that's on the sports page. Of course, it's going to be on Monday Night Football coming up next week. And hoping to get your hands on the new iPhone 10. It might be a lot harder than you think. See how long you'll have to wait for Apple's newest device. That's on our consumers page. And we will see you back here live on Facebook at 9.15 ish. All right, thanks, Jace. We'll be watching. And what we're also watching is uh, kind of a deterioration in the weather today. Now, right now, it's quiet, it's dry. Uh, mid to upper 30s uh, for a temperature right now. We'll have windy showers developing through the course of the day, especially this afternoon. The wind could gust to 30 miles per hour. High temperature 47 degrees, so it's going to be a chilly one. And since some of the kids are watching right now, I'm just going to put this up here to show you. Your parents are not going to be lying tomorrow when they say you need to bundle up and dress in layers. It is going to be a very cold Halloween. Wind chill will be in the teens, but at mm. least it'll be dry, Kim. Hopefully you got some warm costumes. Ooh. Until in the 30s. Did okay. I say teens? <laughs> oh, 30s. Wait, 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 wait. 30s. Uh, I'm sorry, 30s. Just had to clarify there. <laughs> All right, well, let's take a look at your commute right now. This is the lodge right at Evergreen, and we are good to go in this area. No accidents. All right, yes. good deal. Still freezing over here from the teens. <laughs> I know, I'm like, teens. Like, Thanks for We're not there yet. Not there yet. <laughs> All right, let's uh, announce another winner for our special vote for the best Halloween edition. Next up is the winner for best adult costume, grown up costume. <laughs> take a look. Terrifying. The winner is Nancy McGinnis, dressed oh as Malficient, the evil fairy, which is from Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. That's impressive. Maleficent. Maleficent. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't see that. It's okay, Rhonda. <laughs> I'm like, how do you pronounce that? <laughs> to see the complete list of winners, you can head on over to our website at clickondetroit.com slash for the best. We have kids and dogs yeah. and cats and lots of good stuff. It. Yeah, well guys, speaking of best costumes, oh, don't boy. forget to tune in tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. when we reveal <laughs> our costumes.
just assumes, guys, oh. stop. No, 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 no. This Our just assumes for this year that this is a hint of what I'm going to be and I We've been dropping. I look good. You, We've been good. dropping a lot of hints. Her face tomorrow. Trust me. <laughs> Tune in just to see that. We've got a good one for you this year. Yeah. Have a good day, everybody. A good one.